Uh, now we're going to be talking about diagnostics and a scan tool or a code reader that sometimes we use. Now, before doing that, let's take into consideration something. Let's say you have a code reader, which means it gives you the code. You put it into the connector, which is the DLC connector on the bottom, underneath the dashboard, underneath the steering wheel. And it tells you throttle position sensor, circuit. There's a problem with the throttle position sensor. Your code reader will tell you that with a code, P1, whatever, whatever it is. But the di let's understand the difference of a technician, how he looks at this problem, and usually what the customer would do. So the customer, let's say, let's make it a little simpler. Instead of a throttle position sensor, let's an oxygen sensor because that's the most common failure. So you go for inspection, you have a check engine light, you're told that you cannot pass inspection with a check engine light. So right away you know you have problems. You could have put your code reader, which is not a scanner, it just tells you the code. A scanner tells you all the parameters, air-fuel ratio, lean, rich. You don't need that. You just know oxygen sensor. So we'll change this to make it a little simpler. Now, why is this so common for these oxygen sensors? Well, if you look at it, oxygen sensors are the, next to the exhaust, catalytic converter. There's about six or eight sometimes catalytic, catalytic uh, I'm sorry, uh, oxygen sensors compared to one throttle position sensor, one intake air temperature sensor. So therefore, since there's six to one or eight to one, whatever it is, the odds are pretty good that that component will have a greater failure rate. Okay, also the location, which is next to heat, the exhaust, it's pretty hot up there, obviously. So the failure rate will be greater. So what do you do? You get the code and it tells you oxygen sensor. First thing that comes to your mind is, okay, I gotta replace it. That's the problem right there. What do you do? You go to AutoZone. Go to AutoZone, you go to ask the cashier, and you say, do you have an oxygen sensor, 2005 uh, Toyota Camry? The person who sells, or the seller, or the merchant, will tell you, oh, sure, we have it in stock. We sell a lot of those. Right away, he caught you. With what he just said, that line that he just used on you, we sell a lot of those, that will put confidence in your assumption that that's the problem. So you say, oh, okay, okay. If, a, if he has a lot of stock and he sells a lot of those, that must mean that they go bad. So I must be in the right direction. So... You buy it from AutoZone, you put it in, which is not so easy because you need a special tool if it's on the exhaust or it's under the chassis. But regardless of that, you put it in, you installed it. Still, the check engine light is on. You wanted to save money on the labor rate, right, that the dealer wanted to uh, um, add on, obviously. And here or not, sure enough, still there, the fault. That's the common way a person will go about it. Now, why am I making this video? Because it's just not enough to see throttle position sensor. This leads you to the system, the scanner, or whatever you're using, whatever you're from Snap-on, whatever you're using, or the code reader, it will introduce you to the system that has the failure. That doesn't mean every single time that you see oxygen sensor, yes, it's the oxygen sensor. Yes, throttle position sensor, it's the throttle position. No, it will lead you to that system, remember, these are electronic sensors. That, what does that mean? That means the computer is involved. What also does it mean? It means there's a connector giving 12 volts or 5 volts from the computer, uh, as you'll see. Therefore, what is a technician going to do different from what you just did going to AutoZone and installing the part yourself? When you, we talk about diagrams, and I'm, and I'm asked about which diagrams are the, are the best, Mitchell, all data, and things like that, like I always respond, they're, they're very costly. These things are very costly, these type of schematics, unless you have a membership. So they have a lot of information, but they're complicated. For a beginner, a beginner who's starting out in automotive and, and schematics, I would not recommend these type of uh, uh, manufacturers. But they have these things called flowcharts. And what are these? Again, this is the textbook of music. They asked me the title. This is from, here's the title, the author. This is what I use, like I said, one of the two 
books that I used. And like I said, 20 years ago, we didn't have YouTube. We had to learn from textbooks. So anyway, there's a flow chart. Whenever you have a problem, you go to the manual from, let's say, Mitchell All Data. It'll direct you in a path based upon what you just read, the code that you just got from the scanner. In this case, signal voltage high. That means not the, the, the 12 volts or the 5 volts that's being given to it. The signal voltage going back to the computer is a high signal, too high. So therefore, we're going to go through a flow chart. A flow chart means if you have this problem, you go in this direction, yes. If you don't have this problem, you go in the other direction, no. That's how you go about it. For example, throttle position sensor again. Does technician one display, which is you, display throttle position over 2.5 volts? It's saying it's high. What's considered high? 1 volt, 2 volts, 3 volts, 5 volts. In this case, they're asking technician one, which is you, or in the dealership, whoever you gave your uh, um, vehicle to. And let's say this is the picture in the dealership, right? So he's diagnosing. He went to the scanner, he's getting the information, he's going through the flow chart of your, your, your uh, problem. Now, it says over 2.5 volts. Do I have that? Do I have uh, over 2.5 volts? If I have 3 volts, if I have um, 2.7 volts, yes, I do. Which direction am I going to go? I'm going to go in this direction. Now it tells me disconnect the sensor. Okay, I disconnect it, take the, uh, the connector off. Tech 1, which is you, should display throttle position below 0.2 volts, which is equal to 200 millivolts. Does it? So in other words, I, dis uh, I took it off, right? And the, the throttle position says it should read, obviously, 0.2 volts, because I just took away the voltage from it. If yes, you continue this way. If no, you go this way. So let's say it didn't go to 0.2 volts. Let's say it went to one volt. Then you go in this way, TPS signal circuit shorted to voltage or 40, 40 SM. Now, here comes the rough part of it. You have, you have to understand something. There's a connected to it. You have to make sure there's 12 volts to it, 5 volts to it. There's a signal feedback back to the computer. Now it gets complicated. Now do I have the connector with the right voltage? All along, you've been concentrating on it's the sensor, it's the sensor, it's the sensor, right? Oxygen sensor, opposition sensor. What about the connector giving the voltage? What about the ground? What about the signal return back to the computer? Let's say the computer did not get it. Let's say computer shows zero volts, whatever it is. There's a wire that goes to the throttle position sensor back to the computer. Let's say that wire is broken or whatever or shorted. Then you're going to have problems. So it could be an ECM fault internal or external or it could be a ground problem or it could be a connector problem not giving the five volts this is the, what technician it goes through and this is the flow chart we use to detect this so it, as you can see it's much more deep and involved than just saying okay i'm gonna get a new oxygen sensor from autozone it's not like that this gives you the system the path the direction where to go Okay, that's what the code is for. However, it doesn't mean 100% of the time, yes, it's this sensor. As you can see from the flow chart, ground, B+, plus, connector, uh, um, uh, the ECM itself, the computer module itself is involved. There's many faults that can, that can arrive. So making the correct diagnostics it's not always easy just because you have a scan tool and you have the code. So try to keep that in mind. So please go to my channel, um, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, and my other videos on Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. And you'll see some videos, like I mentioned before, about relays and circuit and clamp meters and alternators um, hands-on. Um, you'll see some instructions. And like I said before, if you want to... Sometimes when you give it to the dealership, obviously there's a labor charge, okay? If they charge 120, 130, whatever they charge, right, it's tackled on to the part that costs. Just because you give it to the dealership, 
they have they work on the same cars all the time obviously toyota honda they know their cars because they work on those models all the time and probably they have those all the circuits in the stock room because they know which are faulty which go bad obviously they see the same cars all the time as opposed to the regular private one he doesn't have the, the stock all those parts he has to order them and he doesn't have all the information because he's working on different models, Hondas, Toyotas, BMW, whatever it is he's working on. So that's different from one dealership, which is always working on the same cars all the time. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.